Bang! Neves Knives. I'm Jared, my lovely wife Kara is busy, and today we are going to go over a whole bunch of knives and talk about the sharpening tools. Talk about what they did right, what they did wrong, what makes a good sharpening tool, and just a bunch of sharpening tool talk because I feel like a sharpening tool not only is very important to the life of the knife, but also how it's going to perform and just how easy it's going to sharpen or how difficult. A sharpening tool is very important in my opinion. And sometimes they don't even need a sharpening tool if that's done right. So let's talk about it. So this is the new Hinder, or not new, <laughs> the new scale on the Hinder XM18 that was once a micarta Hinder XM18. And I couldn't be more happier with this thing. This thing is so amazing. I love it. Even the action improved, which I didn't think was possible because the action was so amazing to begin with. This thing is epic. Okay, so let's get into it. So now, one thing that, because there's a couple different styles of sharpening trolls. There's the finger sharpening or the finger choil and then just the sharpening choil. So a finger choil usually plays as a sharpening choil as well. Now a sharpening choil is basically so you can get the edge of the knife on the sharpening stone and sharpen without anything right here getting in the way. Because since the edge is right there, anything that's in the way right there will cause a problem. It can cause your edge to lift. It can cause it to hit and then you get damage down there or you start sharpening into it. So the hinder is done very well with the finger choil because you can see the plunge grind and there's different kinds of plunge grinds too. We'll go on to plunge grinds. So this plunge grind has the swooping plunge grind, which basically tapers from here to here. So from here to here, you're going to be able to sharpen that back, which is done very nicely. So the more you sharpen it, the higher the edge will go in this area. Let me get a pen to point stuff. So the edge is going to start moving up this. So it's done very well. And it basically has enough meat to go all the way to about right there before it'll start causing an issue. Well done. At least for the model with the finger choil. Let's look at another knife now. And I'm just gra grabbing random knives, okay? So here is the EZC. I think... I think it's the easy C. Easy C. This is brand new. So the Easy C 2.0. It's the integral version, Ray Laconico, the Monterey Bay knives. Now, if you look at this sharpening trail, now this one isn't done so good. And I'll show you why. So this one has the plunge grind, kind of like the hinder, where it tapers down. But what they did was you can see right there is still the plunge grind and it lands right at the edge. So you will be able to sharpen this one or two times, but that's it before. Well, first off, this part will pop out a little farther because right there, literally right at the tip of the edge right there, it's thicker. It's thicker steel right there, and I can actually feel it when I go like this. I can feel it poking out just a little bit. You can actually kind of see it, too. So that's going to be a, a small issue. So this would be considered a, a little issue, and it can be dealt with because also a big deal with choils and how you're going to be able to, if you're going to be able to fix them, is how they close. So this one doesn't hit nothing when you close it. So they do give you an opportunity to work on it if you wanted to make it bigger. Now, some knives, you, that's not a big deal. You just think like, okay, I can add my own sharpening choil. But some people, they're not good at adding sharpening choils, nor do they have the tools, or they don't want to go through the effort when they, they bought a knife. So let's look at another one. The Kaiser Lieb. So now this one is done okay and i'm going to show another knife that's done great that's the exact same way so you see 
This is actually done pretty good because the plunge grind isn't much of a swooping plunge grind or a tapering. It basically just drops almost straight down. It has a little bit of a taper, but it drops so suddenly that technically the plunge grind is behind the edge. So as you sharpen this knife, once you say get past this point and you're sharpening right here, it's just going to go up this line right here, kind of like a spider co, which is okay. So now the Artisan Centauri, a lot like the Lieb, but they left a lot of sharpening before it'll ever even hit there. It's very similar, except for this one doesn't extend to give you multiple sharpenings before it gets to the part to where you you have to make sure you're always going to be sharpening up the blade anyways with this knife but they left a lot of sharpening here before it'll ever start hitting there before you ever have to start watching out for that you're basically clear to just put it on the stone and start sharpening without worrying about hitting anything eventually or like the Kaiser Lieb, you are going to start hitting this little plunge area. And, you know, it's not going to be that big of a deal on this one, but that one's done better. So now a spider co or spider co's, you see how they have the plunge grind that just drops straight down into the blade. So since it drops straight down to the blade, you never have to worry about hitting the plunge grind. So you can sharpen all the way back to this wall. Now, sometimes a big common thing is you get this little tiny piece of steel that separates in between there. That's not that big of a deal. So in my opinion, if you're going to do uh, a a choilless, so a non-choiled knife, this is how it should be done. Where the plunge grind just drops straight down, it gives you the maximum amount of edge. And yeah, so basically as you're sharpening, you see you can go right to the edge. You can go right to the edge and start sharpening from right there, which works good. And it's not going to get ugly in the future. Let's look at the QSP Penguin. So this one, you see it's got the tapering plunge grind, which isn't a big deal if it's done right. But in this case, they didn't give you much meat to sharpen. And when I say meat, basically what I'm talking about is when they give you enough, they give you steel to sharpen back. They give you a little bit extra steel to keep sharpening away at. So you don't wind up cutting into the plunge grind, which this is starting to, as you can see. So now from here on out, I'm going to have to sharpen up this area right here. So I'm going to have to just sharpen basically from here up and I'm going to have to be careful that my edge moves up the blade and doesn't start going this way. So this one, it was done okay from the start. They just didn't give me much meat to sharpen away at. Now, if I was going to add a sharpening toil here, I could. Let's chuck it. And yeah, because right here is the stop pin. So the stop pin actually locks up under here. So they left me an area where I could add one if I wanted to. All right, next. Okay, let's look at a couple knives really quick. So this is another Spyderco, the Spyderco Techno 2. So you see it's kind of like the way the Kaiser Lieb was. You see, it's very, very similar. Since they have that, that straight down plunge grind, that works out. So now, basically, all the steel is going to go up the blade. Let's look at the clutch. The clutch is done extremely well. They left you some meat on the bones. So you have steel to sharpen away at before it ever touches the plunge grind. And then you can see the shadow of the plunge grind lands right there. So they gave, gave you a hefty amount of steel to sharpen away on the Kaiser clutch. 
All right, let's look at another one. Let's look at the waypoint. So on the waypoint, they did give you, you know what? This is kind of like the cl the clutch. If they would have just did a little bit more meat, but they they gave you some room to sharpen away because the plunge grind is definitely behind the edge. So they definitely gave you a little bit, but not much. It's only going to be a few sharpenings. You're going to get away with a few before it ever goes up to here unless if you chip the edge if the edge chips and you have to remove some steel then it's basically going to go all the way up to here and then your edge will be straight from here over so you won't see this no more now they did give you an opportunity to add a new one if you want without having no problem so i can just add another one of these in the future when that one does disappear. Let's look at one that has disappeared and is on the verge of needing a new one. So this is the Kaiser Fire, wait, what was this? The Fire Ant, right? I think it's the Fire Ant. Yeah, the Fire Ant. Yeah, Fire Ant. <laughs> so this is the Kaiser Fire Ant. Now this was very similar to the way they had the Quiet Carry Waypoint before. But now it's gone, as you can see right there. So now it's doing exactly what I was saying this is going to do in the future. So this is what the future of this will look like. And then you can either take a Dremel and a bit and drill in another little one. Let's see if it'll hurt it. I don't think it will. Nope. You can see it under there. So they gave you an opportunity. Most knives give you an opportunity to cut in a sharpening tool, but not all of them. I have seen um, some hinders that don't. I've seen I've seen many knives that, that make it very difficult. And we'll look at one here in a second. So basically, you can either just keep sharpening to where it's straight back to here, but then eventually, once you sharpen this back to where this becomes the edge. You will hit the plunge grind a little bit, but it's kind of made in a way where you can stay in front of it. So, well done, Kaiser. They did give you an opportunity to keep sharpening that, obviously. Oh, you know what? Actually, we can look at the Rogue, which is the big cousin to this knife. And you'll see that's basically what this one's going to eventually do. It will go all the way back to there, start hitting the plunge. You see it hitting the plunge right there. And to some people, that's not a big deal. To some people, that might look ugly, though. So it just depends on your preference. This took a lot of sharpening, though. So let me just say that this is a work knife that was very much hard used and had a lot of edges put on it. Tucson 195. Now, this one looks like it's done so well, right? There's a small issue, though. Do you see that little mark right there? That little mark is the stop pin in the closed position right here. So basically, if I sharpen back a lot of steel and I sharpen into there, I will make it where it will over travel when it closes. So it won't close properly. So that is something I have to be cognitive of. I have to know that. And if I didn't know that and say, I've got a big chip in the edge and I started sharpening it back, like you've seen some of those other knives and they start sharpening back this way, that would hurt this knife. I have to make sure when I sharpen this knife from here on out, cause it's had, uh, I think it's only had one sharpening possibly two, but I have to make sure I sharpen from here up. I cannot sharpen back. So I have to make sure when I'm on my stone that I start here and I sharpen this way. I don't ever go back this way like this and go all the way to there. Start here, sharpen, stop, Oop, stop, sharpen, stop sharp like that all right let's look at some more now here is a beautiful sharpening trail in my opinion bang look at all that meat they gave you so much life to this knife because look at all these sharpenings i have i could sharpen for 
a long time up this. And eventually when it gets to right here, but think about how long that'll be before that much steel is removed. When it gets to right here, then it will start leveling out right there. Now, this knife will probably be retired by then. So that's what I mean by they gave the, they made this knife to be used in, in many, many ways, not just in that way. So they gave this thing a lot of life with this sharpening trail. And you can see how far away, because here's the top of the plunge grind. So this is the same thickness all the way around. So... Very, very nice. Very, very nice. That is the Tucson TS-162. Here's the kite, or sorry, the Wii Kite Fin. Now, this one's done very well, but they also, they, you know, it's only had one edge put on it. I think it's only one edge. Anyways. So, but you see, it, I wish it would have curled around just a little bit more, kind of like that last knife, because soon this is going to start sharpening back this way. It will start, the edge will start moving its way back this way, the more it's sharpened. But you can always just sharpen up the blade, like I said with that other two sun, where I can't sharpen back this way. Or you can just keep sharpening it, you know, however it works out. But this one is done well done. It's more of a sh finger choil than just a sharpening choil, which adds to the benefit of the sharpening. Buck Marksman, not done good at all. Look at the plunge grind here. Look where it lands. Bam, right there. Now, so you can see what wound up happening. So, one, it's got a smile. You can see the smile right there because that's what I was talking about. That's what happens when you hit the plunge grind. It's thicker material. So, not only does your edge get thicker right there, but then it can also curl around right there. Not good at all. Looks bad. Now, this is a work knife, um, a user, so it's not that big of a deal to me. But I just wish they would have cut this notch up to here. That's all they had to do. Cut it up to here, make this circle, this hole, around to there. So what you want to watch out for is these plunge grinds. The plunge grinds are basically everything when it comes to the knife. Now, the one thing is, is it is a hollow grind. So, I mean, it's got a lot of life for the edge-wise, but not for the choil-wise. They made, made it where you basically got to sharpen into it or you have to create your own choil. Or should I say a better trail, which is quite a bit of work on that one. Here's another example of a knife, the Tucson TS-264, that you have to sharpen up the blade. You see this little notch they put right there? Well, basically, there is a stop in there. It's a little hump right here. And that's where, when the blade is closing, that hump lands right here. You can actually see the little mark. It lands right here, which makes it to where this is in a corner. So you don't want to sharpen back past this. If you sharpen this away and sharpen into here, you have a, a possibility of it not closing all the way or it closing too far or just having problems in the closed position with the detent. So you want to make sure from sharpening, you sharpen up the blade and do not go past that. You want to start all your sharpening right there at the edge. And don't sharpen back here like this. Sharpen from, from right there forward. Here's another great example of a sharpening trail done right. This knife is soon to be gone. Somebody won it. And... I think I'm going to be heading to on Thursday. But anyways, right here, look at all, look from the plunge grind over. That is a great sharpening choil slash finger choil. Well done, real steel. I missed the plunge grind and left you a lot of meat on the bones. 
Here's a Cabela's knife. This knife is not done very well. The plunge grind, they basically it tapers down to the edge. So, I mean, you see what's happening here. Eventually, this is going to hit here. Then, it's just, it's you're basically going to start getting a more prouder recurve eventually because this is going to be so much thicker right here than it is right here, 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 and up the blade. So, eventually, with more and more sharpening, this is going to be an even more pronounced recurve. That's another thing. Is some knives do that. They wind up making you recurve. Now, what's another great example of a sharpened twill is the Chris Reeves Sabenza. Look at that. The plunge grind is way down here. You can't even see it. It's all the way down there. And it's a hollow grind. So they gave you so much life on this knife. This knife was made to last a very, very long time. And it shows by the way they did their grind and sharpening troll. You can basically sharpen this for the forever. <laughs> very, very well done. Now, here's another one done by Spyderco where they do the plunge grind where it just drops straight in. So, that's okay because they, but they basically gave you um, more edge rather than taking the choil and wrapping it around. Um, some people prefer one or the other, but this is still well done because all you have to do is sharpen from there up. Eventually... This little bit of meat they left you down here will be gone, and you will be sharpening up this. So basically the edge will start here after a long time. This is the Spider Coat. How do we do it? Spider Coat Gale Bradley 2. We'll just do a couple more. This is a long-ass video. This is... An ex I guess... It, you see what winds up happening, but it's not that big of a deal with this knife. You see now the edge is going to have to be sharpened up the plunge grind. But if you hit the plunge grind, you see how it can start doing damage. You see that damage right there? But this gives you the full length of the blade and with a small knife sometimes it's good to not have a sharp or not a finger twirl slash sharpening twirl because then you can keep doing repeat cuts rather than getting a hook because when you have a choil on a small blade when you're cutting into something it can get caught into that that little choil area so it leaves you a spot to not hit the the choil or it, do, it doesn't give you a spot to to catch on and in return you just got to be more careful when sharpening cjrb malaya now this one looks really good and it is well done you do have a lot of life of sharpening on this however the stop pin hits right there in the closed position so you do have to be careful not to sharpen too much of this because if you continue to sharpen back in here, it will eventually cause problems. Now that's a long time. That's a lot of life. And a lot of people probably won't ever sharpen this knife that much. They'll just wind up getting a new one before all of that, that steel is gone because by then the blade, this, this edge will basically be up to there. Which, when you chip your knife, that's not that much steel to remove. So, in all reality, a lot of people might end up running into that issue eventually. Um, just eventually, when it does hit that point, like right there, you're going to have to make sure you sharpen up the blade and don't let the edge go back any farther. I think you guys get the point. This video's went on entirely way too long. Hopefully you guys do get what I'm saying and... Try to watch out for good and bad sharpening twills. Here's the Benchmade Griptilian. You can see they did that pretty decent. They gave you um, quite a bit of sharpening before it gets passed right there. Now, is that the lock? Uh, no.
and they also left it where you can cut in a new sharpening choil which is good so well done benchmade on this one so watch out for your sharpening choils sharpening choils have a lot to do with the life of your knife i love you guys peace